Good evening. We're back with more Lord of the Rings LCG. And tonight it's Into Ithilien on Nightmare Mode. This is an interesting quest. A Branching Paths quest. We start out with a location that needs to be cleared as soon as possible because it reduces the engagement cost of enemies pretty dramatically and allows the encounter deck to overwhelm the player. If it's not cleared click quickly enough, quickly enough, the Mumok you see there, the are nightmare specific cards that get added to the staging area later in the game. Do start out with Steward of Gondor here, which is good. And an extra resource. So we're going to get an Ether Swordsman, a Knight of the Swan, and an Onphalos Herdsman here. Two Hunters of Lamadon and Forlong are going to get discarded. And we're going to use Very Good Tail for a Warrior of Lasernak. So we are battle questing to start. Keladon, Kelador, in the staging area there, is committed to the quest every round. He takes damage if we lose characters. And there's another circumstance that I'm not remembering right now where he takes damage. If you quest unsuccessfully, he takes damage. So in this instance, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm thinking about well, no, I'm not thinking about anything. That's enough with the with the dud lost competition. That doesn't add any threat. We go ahead and clear well Kelador adds his as well. So we clear the location so we don't have to engage the Southern Company on round one, though the threat should be three higher than it is right now. It should be 27, but that's not going to affect anything. We do clear the location and put one progress on Ambush in Athelion. Going to most likely quest a little lightly here in an attempt to get set up before moving on to phase two and hopefully clear the board. I have one of each Outlands ally out and now I'm just debating with myself about how to use the resources most efficiently. And I decide on a Men of the West to get a Hunter of Lamadon, play that, and at their Swordsman and let the Envoy of Pelargear get discarded. And now is the Point where we debate how much to commit to the quest. Of course the Southern Company has plus two willpower while the quest has battle or siege. And it's another Southern Company. So it's six against to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we do make two progress. Uh, I may have forgotten about Kelador and didn't take my two progress. Which is fine. Probably just gonna make things harder on me when I do wanna clear the quest eventually. But the second Knight of the Swan is gonna be very helpful in giving more attack power and that'll give options. Should be a 28 threat here. 
and so I'm going to quest just to not take on more threat. So it's 369 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I do make two progress. And I can go ahead and, oh, that actually should have plus two willpower, so which I just noticed, and minus two progress. Thanks to that, it's going to be the active location. I'm going to engage one of these companies. It's going to have attack of 5, so we'll put that on her Lewin for 2 damage. And then should be able to take out this southern company pretty easily. It's possible I could have handled the other southern company as well, although I think I would have lost an Outlands ally if I did that. As I did not lose an ally, or a character there, or quest unsuccessfully, Kelador has taken no damage yet at this point. So we're going to continue getting set up with another Knight of the Swan so I can basically quest for however much I want in battle questing. And at this point with the near full setup there's not much that can go wrong. The early part of the game has gone pretty well getting three Knights of the Swan out in the first 28 cards is great. And that is even better, a Athelian Guardian, which is going to enter play committed to the quest. It, su it should surge though into a Morgul Spider, so that's gonna take off three progress, or three progress, yeah. And we're going to engage that. Threat should be a 29, so I don't have to engage Southern Company, but I'm going to. And that's another Guardian that's going to deal 2 damage to the attacking enemy. He attacks for 5, so that will be 2 damage. And the Morgul Spider gets plus none is going to destroy a character which will put one damage on Kelador. And it's going to clear the board. I still haven't realized one. Oh, there we go. One damage on Kelador. You can go ahead and move on to phase two now. with this formidable setup. Set up for battle siege or regular questing. Outlands is good at that. So, and the rangers are automatically committed to the quest. It's going to be 4, 8, 12, 15 or so. So it's a doomed one and I have to go find a Herod enemy. I'd prefer a southern company over a Mumak, which I think is the other option, or the, the dudes with the spears. The Haradrim elite. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, Four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen to three is twelve progress. That's going to be enough to move us on into phase three, bypassing phase two since Kelador is still alive. Take control of all ranger objectives. I'm not going to be making engagement checks or optionally engaging enemies during this phase. It's going to be normal questing. which is no problem. And we got four long joining the party and a heed the dream which will probably be looking for I'm not sure, actually sure there's anything specific we still need. Can just grab an errand rider for cannon fodder. And now I'll just be trying to proceed to the end phase of the game as fast there I decide instead I'm going to go for a very good tail. I'm not sure what I'd be fishing for here though. Maybe the last warrior of loss or not.
Yeah, I always find it as an errand rider. I don't think that was a, a good, very good tail play there. Probably just a waste. But anyway, we'll try to move through phase two in one turn. Phase three, I mean. Trying to move on to phase four as quickly as possible. Should be at 34 threat. Doom two, so 36 threat. Switch from, well this current quest doesn't have a keyword so it surges. And I quested for quite a lot so I'll be moving on out of phase two here. And into phase four. If player's threat is 37 or higher it's currently 36. But that's not going to matter since I have two Warriors of Lossernock in play. 38 isn't high enough that I have to deal with the Mumok. But I should have engaged the Southern Company and Given my board state at the time, I would have had no issue dealing with it. I don't know why I opted to leave it in the staging area, to be honest. I thought my threat was lower than it should have been, but it, that shouldn't have impacted my decision. I should have cleared the Southern Company there. That was a silly thing to do to leave it. And in this stage, I do normal questing, but I should have been doing siege questing. But with three warriors of Lossernock on the table, that does not really matter. I can put basically any amount of siege questing I want here. So 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus I need 27. So that'd be what? 3, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, Oh yeah, I have way, way more than enough shields here to get all of the questing done that I needed. Should have had to deal with the Southern Company last turn. I don't know why I chose not to, but I shouldn't have had the option. And that would end the game, whether it's Siege or normal or battle or whatever with the Outlands deck in this board state, it is, does not matter. So uh, the failure to add the additional 3 threat at the beginning of the game made for some minor changes in the game toward the end, but would not impact the victory given the board state. And might have actually made it a little easier to be honest because I had plenty of guys available to deal with the Southern Company. So, uh, <laughs> well, what can you say? Anyway, this quest, uh, the quest, the difficulty in it lies with the, well, you have to do, in this path where you go 1, 3, 4, you have to do battle, normal, and siege questing. If you go 1, 2, 4, you don't have to do normal questing, you just go battle, siege, siege, but you have to take on an additional Mumok elite. And that is a, a, a great challenge. In uh, normal difficulty, one, two, four is actually the easier path to go. I talked about that in my playthrough of the normal quest on my progression series, but they have made that path much harder on the nightmare mode with the Mumok elites because you get one in phase two and four. I think it is phase two and four, yeah. So they made that path that I used in the progression series a lot more difficult. But with the Outlands deck, it's extremely well suited for quests where you have to do multiple different types of questing because it's a very balanced deck. So thanks for watching.